Hello beautiful people, it's Kate here. Welcome to Kate's Space. I'm just going to do a quick video because I I went to a little uh, crafting retreat in the weekend. Uh, I didn't go for the whole weekend, I just went for the day on the Saturday and I thought I'm going to keep it simple because I always, like I said, I've said before, I always pack too much. So I thought oh, I'll print out some of these wallpaper Digis that are from Heather Ruby and Pearl, which I'll link down below. Um, I'm a little bit obsessed with wallpaper at the moment, vintage wallpaper, as you <laughs> you've all probably guessed. And then I got some of this. I've got an old book. It's falling apart. It's an 1800s um, botanical book. There are some really lovely images in it, which I'm hoping one day, if I can get a grip on how to scan things and them not turn out um, looking rubbish. Um, I probably will scan some of those uh, images, but these pages, they're quite friable. Um, see, they're just very um, old. So I use those to back uh, the, the, um, the little digital. And what I really wanted to do was use up all my uh, eco dyed. Well, not, yeah, so eco dyed, well, as in. Um, hand dyed paper. So it's just photocopier paper that I dyed with the black beans, but because I put it on a cloth that had already had coffee dyed paper on it, it kind of got this brownie tinge. It's a bit grungy. There's still a lovely blue to that one. I don't know if it looks blue on camera. And then this is the avocado dyed paper, but that kind of got a little bit of coffee on it as well. Doesn't look very pink on camera, but um, it's quite pink. And then I made some envelopes as well. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some more. I'm gonna have a real stash. These ones I thought you could actually stick into a journal and they could open up and you could maybe write on them. That would be quite cute. Um, but also they're great for little cards, notes, uh, into happy mail or whatever. And then I found another image on my computer that I love and I used this in the Bella journal at the back. So I printed that four to a page. I think it's an image out of a, an old botanical book. I can't, to be honest, tell you where I found that. And I used that. And this time I used the bit I cut off this side. I've layered it twice down here. And um, yeah, and then what I thought is, what if you don't have an envelope punch board? Well, I took an envelope apart. And I'm going to draw around it. So let's start with that. It's amazing how not straight this envelope is. Look at it on the paper there. Um, so I'll just, I'll just try. So how is everybody this week? I hope everybody's well and getting some crafting done. Some of you will be into summer and having lovely warm days over here in um, the southern hemisphere. It's getting cold, though I must admit this last weekend or last few days, I'm making a bit of a mess of this, but that's okay, I'll rub all the pencil out, have been um, really warm. It's kind of, kind of odd. Normally we would be expecting it to be a lot colder, but Maybe that's coming. It is only the beginning beginning of winter. June. So this is pretty messy, but it's going to be folded, so I'm not too worried. But that's what you could do. Take an envelope apart and just draw around it. Get your scissors. Hmm. Find a pair of scissors and... You won't have your scored marks like you do with the envelope scoreboard, but that's, I mean, that's not the end of the world either. It's still probably going to work. Oh, we'll soon find out. I haven't done it yet. I'll be able to work out where the score marks need to, need to go. But yeah, I didn't want to throw this paper away just because it didn't turn out perfectly dyed. 
um, next time. Oh, I am going to probably make another batch soon. I've got some avocado skins in the freezer. And I think um, I'll make sure I lay it on something that hasn't had coffee dyed paper lying on it. And I'll lay it out more carefully, I think. I might even soak it for a bit longer to see if I can get a deeper, a deeper pink. It's all experimentation. So, if you wanted to make these, you don't even have to bother with the envelopes. You could just buy some envelopes to put them in, actually. <laughs> Uh, I just want to use up my paper. So. Right, so let's have a look at how this goes. So obviously we score... Should I use... I'll just use a ruler. And a, I might even just go like this. Just, just push this up against the ruler. It's actually just started raining and it's quite dark outside, so I've got my light on. I hope it's not too too many shadows or anything. And then the same there, just push that up. Against the ruler. Yep, so far so good. Same again there, I think. I just make the assumption that because an envelope has been bought from the store that it's going to be absolutely perfect and straight and it just goes to show they're not and we worry oh, well, I worry so much about some of the things that I make not being perfectly straight here we go look at that awesome so yeah so that's a good thing to do and actually even better would be to actually glue that onto some card and then you would easily be able to trace around it. Um, so let's make let's make one of the note cards. We'll make one with the flower that I've printed off. And you could use a, a, a if you've got a beautiful image in a book. You don't have to have digitals. Um, though in saying that, if you've got a printer, a digital some digital kits they're not very expensive. I have printed this on Epsom presentation paper, which is why it's got that, that's just so beautiful and vivid. It would be probably a, a much more muted if I'd just printed it onto um, normal copy paper. Also, you don't have to tear if you don't like torn edges, but I have made these look quite, um, I guess, rugged, <laughs> rough, rough, you could say rough. And then I've taken my little heel, heel scraper that I use for distressing, and I'm just distressing around the edge of the paper because I like that look, but again, not everybody is, likes this look. A little bit rough and torn and worn and aged like me <laughs> speaking of age the other day or the other night I just wasn't really sleeping that well and I um I must have kind of fallen asleep with my arms sort of bent over the top of my head well you have to just be careful you don't scratch the image there but I mean you can hardly tell it and it's and it's part of the oldness or the vintagey distress of it I ink I ink this one yeah so I fell asleep with my arms up above my head and I well I don't know if I was asleep or anyway whatever and I went to stretch and as I stretched I felt and it almost felt like I could hear it this pop in my left hand sort of near my my back by my shoulder blade and oh my word it hurt it hurt so much so i've got some pink avocado paper so the next 
so th by three o'clock in the morning I was so sore I could hardly roll over in bed and I wasn't sleeping so I got up and I took some pain relief because I have some good pain relief for um, I have arthritis so every now and then when that flares up I've got some good anti-inflammatories that I can take so I grab some of those Oh, now that's what I did with this other one. I shortened this part here. So I made this a bit smaller. Yeah, I took some anti-inflammatories and went back to bed, but oh, I didn't have a good night. And I didn't have a good day the next day either, to be fair. But um, I am feeling, it's feeling a lot better. It's still there, but nothing like it was. Um, I've just been taking some regular paracetamol and anti-inflammatories and it seems to have settled down so tomorrow uh tomorrow's yoga so i'm going to give yoga a go tomorrow and see how i go the other cool thing sometimes you can just fold down a little corner if you, if you fancy that a little folded down corner i quite like things like that so there it is you've got your border now so if you've got some old book page and it certainly doesn't have to be um, from the 1800s. The thing with this paper, it's actually probably not that much good for anything else because it's so brittle. So um, it's a good way to use it. So there. And then just check. I don't really, I don't really mind what kind of... So on one side, there's a little bit of type that says, and the flower is said to be monoclammy hyphen something. You know what I mean? It, I, I don't think it matters. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna take that off about there. And then I'm just going to take this off where the printing, where the printing stops. And then what I did with this other one, and I didn't do that on the ones I did with the wallpapers, is I got this little bit and I just kind of it up like this and I just glued it to there so gave it an extra layer so just a little bit of this is just art glitter glue but you can use anything and I just push it right up to the edge there and it simply just tore that off and then when you add that into there it just gives it yet another little border just another layer which i quite like so then we attach this i think i used actually used glue stick for the other ones it's just that this was at hand on my desk and it's it's running out and it keeps spilling out everywhere so i want to actually I actually quite like to finish it off and get it get it finished. And if you want to sort of tear the edges a little bit, you can. If not, no, don't. And then that sits on there. Super simple. Normally if I'm making a card, I would make the base out of cardstock, not paper. But like I said, this the whole purpose of this exercise was to use up this um, less than perfect um, dyed, um, my dyed paper. So there we go. We have a little note card. Some of them I, oh, I showed you, um, but yeah, some of them I folded the A4 piece of paper in half twice. 
I think if I was just sending this off as a thank you, I might, I would probably maybe just trim this off. And the other thing is I've also inked the actual dyed paper. This one's got a nice dark edge just from sitting in the avocado dye or the coffee maybe that's come through off the, off the piece of fabric or the base where it was drying. So that one's a little bit skew with at the bottom, but I don't think it really matters too much. What did I do with the envelope that I made? There we go. So then we just can glue the envelope up. simple card. So this was um, inspired by uh, Penny and Rose Papery when she did her Ruby, and P Ruby Tuesday design team and she made some handmade stationery and she was using scraps of um, Ruby and Heather, Ruby and Pearls digitals. So yeah, I was inspired by that and inspired by the fact that I needed to use up. <laughs> my avocado dyed papers so there's so there's that one and then I've got my uh, digitals here I'm going to use this blue one I think I've started um, a little series of books. Well, at the moment there's two, but I was thinking I might make another one because I've still got some fabric from a piece of fabric I was gifted. And I just love the fabric. And it was gifted to me by my neighbour, my friend Hilary. And it's her birthday. And I'm making her a journal from it. And then I thought, oh, maybe I could make a couple of extras. So we'll see how we go with that. So I've been working on the cover of that today. So there we have a little blue. And actually I found that I have used some black bean. And this is actually cut a little bit heavier. So I might use this for the base. I might just put down here. Put that on a blue base. So all I do is this. So yep, that's right. Is that right? I actually quite like it to be that way. Would I? No. Okay, this way. <laughs> stop faffing, stop faffing around. even going to bother going over to my cutter I'm just going to line it up on my mat use my knife and my ruler and hope I don't stuff it up I like projects like this to make you feel like you've actually achieved something I'm not a fan of that one and that's the part I like the least. So there we go, there's our little base. This is going on top. I take it just a smidge off the side there. It's 
smaller digital, but we can still do this. We? we can still put that little edge around like that. Right, and then at the bottom. What does this type say? Nothing I'm too problematic. So we'll just take that off there. Oh, I'm going to give it a bit of a distress with my... I don't even know what this thing's called. Heel. Heel scraper. Gross. Paper distressor is what we call it now. It has been repurposed. I know you can get proper purpose-built tools for this job, but... And I think I actually have one, but I don't know why I always just go for this. <laughs> there we go, and then I'm going to give that a little bit of an ink. but it does tear she's an old book that one here we go and that's going to glue onto there I love the beautiful colour of the paper <laughs> In the Instagram post that I did, some people were saying, oh, I love the way you've used the gold. And I was like, I haven't used the gold. That's just the way that beautiful paper's glowing in the light when I took the picture. <laughs> it gives this effect of gold. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should try some gold. I've got some of that gold. It's called patinating wax. I just bought it at the art shop. I saw it on the table. And um, oh, see, now I've made that one a bit too wide for the... for the um, base. I don't think it really matters because that can just that can just turn up like that, I think. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's the same as the crafting wax that people, um, I see lots of people using. It seems to, it's quite a dark gold. It's not like a, not like a bright gold like some of those paints. I've used I've seen people use um gold metallic paint with a really good effect as well, actually, around the edges of, of projects and it looks amazing. So that's the other option is remembering when I'm out to get a little bit of gold metallic paint. One of those things I just never remember until unless I'm at home and then it's a bit late. So that one kind of spills over the edge a little bit there, but I, I'm okay with that. And there we go. And we can make an envelope with my funny looking thing. Template.
I went to the my favorite I went to my favorite antique store the other day and treated myself to a few vintage greeting cards and postcards and some vintage trims it's a, and, and a book actually I posted it up on my Instagram a few of the things I got it's it's not a cheap it's not a cheap place it's oh I think I need to cut that it's ex, it's actually quite expensive and um they have just a truckload of old vintage things like their cabinet cards. They've got containers and containers of them, but the majority of them are $9 each, and I just can't. I can't spend that. I don't know um, about anyone else, but that's just too much for me to be spending on one old photo but some of the things I found were um if not bargains they were they weren't wouldn't break the bank so they have a suitcase which has all their sort of um odds and ends of trim and they are they I can tell they're old I know they're old they're not well the majority of them are. I don't buy it if it looks like it's something I could get at um the fabric store but um yeah again it is kind of expensive but it's a treat i don't do it every day or every week it's just um a place i go and usually i look around and gaze at everything and don't buy anything but this day um i had a little bit of time so i asked if i could they opened one of the glass cabinets for me and i said oh can i please just sift through your greeting cards and postcards well this was just on one cabinet and I got, I got a few I really loved so probably spent a little bit more than I wanted to but oh well they've got a huge section of um buttons as well but when I, I said oh how much are the buttons and she said oh the buttons are a dollar each and I'm like oh my gosh that's it's just too expensive so you'd have to I think you have to go in there and maybe go if you've got time go through all the buttons and pick some out and then just offer offer less because that's I just think that's too much I mean who else is and who else is gonna buy them except for <laughs> crafters it's not gonna be a lot of people going in wanting to buy odd Odd old buttons. Anyway. So there we go. There's a little envelope to go with the card that we've just made. How quick and easy is that? And it's just cute. So I think um, making cards, it's good. Yeah, if you've got a little image you like. You can use that and then just layer it up with some bits of paper and, and distress it a little bit and you end up with just a really cute, simple card that um, can be a thank you or a get well or, a, I don't know, just a little note to somebody. I think they're cute. And um, they're easy, simple and easy to make. And then you've got a little stash for when you go, oh my gosh, I need a card for such and such. And you can go, oh, I've got one. I've got one in my drawer. I've sorted. So, yeah. So that's that's what I made. And uh, thought I'd just share it on video and say hi to everybody. I hope you've uh, enjoyed the video. Thanks for hanging out with me if you've um, stuck through the whole video. And I hope you've done some crafting while I've chatted away. I really appreciate um, all my new subscribers, welcome, and appreciate all the support. And I'll see you again soon in the next video. Bye.